Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, and thank you uh, uh, to the participants and the audience. I think I, I obviously represent a standalone management institution, and uh, we're not necessarily a university, though. You know, obviously, I have had experience in university setups in the past, where you have uh, a larger base and acceptance of multidisciplinarity, or this whole idea of uh, you know learning interdiscipline. Um, but uh, management institutions uh, like ours, uh, progressive, they offer a certain base of um, good skill set. Now, whether that is possibly used in the direction and in the context of the discussion today is something that uh, possibly we need to be able to talk about. Uh, that's largely because of you know this whole model of business schools and how that has possibly changed from the 60s and the 70s to now, wherein we all tend to measure ourselves in some narrow parameters of uh, success. Uh, but having said that, I uh, would first talk a little bit more about what we've been doing in this particular context. So we obviously realize that uh, as a private standalone management institution of uh, a certain standard, uh, we had to be able to engage more with the industry. We've always done it, right? So the reason why IMT came along was because of the fact that there was a gap uh, in industry-linked uh, learning, um, let's say in the 80s, and that's one of the big reasons why we came along. But of course, what you have to remember is that there's a wider expanse and wider scope and objective of how industry can be brought into um, you know, academia per se. So I'll give you examples of what we currently do with our Center for Enterprise and Business Improvement, wherein we started small, um, but we've now been able to become more confident about the kind of projects that we actually do. Um, management schools have a certain orientation, certain skill sets, certain positives, certain strengths, and they can they may not necessarily be able to provide you, let's say, the minimum viable product or you know some tech solution, but they, they can go into the next levels about growth, about strategy, about planning, about success uh, as a whole. So our Center for Enterprise and Business Improvement and one of the architects of the center is actually sitting here today. Uh, we started working with the industry. We looked at certain newer age concepts such as insure tech, uh, fintech, now we're looking at, um, like I said, we are becoming more confident about being able to solve problems uh, for the industry. And these are not small projects. These are big projects. We are now vying with, let's say, other uh, private consultancies, uh, the big fours possibly out there, to be able to then um, you know, help on that journey as far as the Center for Enterprise and Business Improvement is concerned. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is our fledgling Center for Sustainability, which has become a one a big area for us one big objective, largely because of the skill sets that we currently have within, uh, you know, uh, within the institution. So here is where we look at working with the industry for climate change. We, we look at, let's say, a certain foundation who is wanting us to understand what are the various service learning uh, strategies that exist in the Indian context. You know, how is social responsibility taught in the Indian context? We all know social responsibility is taught, but is that the way we should be doing uh, social responsibility or teaching it. Uh, at the same time, and something which obviously goes beyond, let's say, the mandate of a business school is uh, this whole idea of an impact or leaving a, a, a footprint. Uh, the original reason for why business schools came along in the 60s is our sports research center. So our sports research center looks at such industry relationships a little differently. Um, here, we're not looking at industry the way we've thought about it, the way we conceive, the way we talk about it today. But we're looking at working with other universities, traditional setups, traditional sports, doing a lot more research, helping other universities to understand in their region what works, what doesn't work, working with federations. Uh, it could be you know, the various sports federations out there to be able to create impact. Uh, you know, we are working with uh, other private partners or even semi-government partners to then create socio-economic mobility amongst a lot of the kids in, in villages in the country. So these are some of the examples that I just wanted to bring up. Uh, you know, in the way we look at it. Has it been easy? Not necessarily. Um, the reasons are, are very much linked to this whole idea of how we are wired as, as management institutions, as business schools, how we are evaluated, how we are measured, how, how our research is looked at in terms of, you know, where you're publishing, what you're publishing. It's also this whole idea of how we communicate with the industry. It's not been very easy for management institutions, uh, you know, to be able to communicate uh, flawlessly, uh, freely with, um, and using the language that industry is more used to. At the same time, it's about commitment on both sides. Uh, at the same time, it's about competency mapping on both sides. Remember um, how we select faculty who should be representing us, who should be in the classroom, who should be teaching us, uh, has a certain orientation. 
But of course, when we talk about industry, uh, uh, richness of the in integration between the industry and business schools such as ours, it requires slightly um, a different orientation to the kind of skill set that we're looking at. That by itself means that we have to f start questioning how we appraise, how we evaluate, how we believe a particular faculty has been contributing to the institution or not. A lot of these things are more long-term. A lot of these things are things which will take some time uh, for us to be able to look at as a, you know, as a cluster of business schools. But these are all areas that we are obviously working on. Um, it requires a lot more flexibility uh, on both sides. You know, uh, everybody's been talking about you know, how there's a certain level of mistrust, how there's a certain level of uh, thought that you know, the industry thinks that academics uh, and academia works in a certain fashion. It'll take some time to be able to penetrate. But I think the industry should also be looking at how they look at uh, academia, how they believe they can benefit from uh, the kind of work that we actually do. So this is where I just wanted to highlight a few things, a few of the um, what we currently believe are potentially success stories for us. But I think there's a lot that needs to be done. But a lot of that needs to be done once we start deconstructing the wiring of you know, schools such as us as we go forward. So thank you so much.